Thank you. It's uh, great to be here. And thanks, special thanks to my colleagues, uh, Sarah Kaplan and Joshua Gans, for inviting me to write this chapter uh, that I'll present to you in brief today. Uh, the invitation was especially important to me because uh, Josh and, Joshua and uh, Sarah said this was an opportunity for me uh, to write what I really think about uh, the impact of health care on uh, large established organizations like the ones that Alberto was just describing here. And the chapter title that, I, uh, that we negotiated and that I se selected was Surviving the Threat of Healthcare. And th this uh, uh, title really reflects the phenomenon that many of you are familiar with, which is that many large organizations, including General Motors, Kodak, Data General, Xerox, cite in their bankruptcy documents that one of the key reasons for their difficulties was the rising cost of health care. Uh, the chapter focuses in particular on General Motors, which in 2005 had estimated that more than $1,400 in the cost of any car were associated with pension obligations, and obligations uh, 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 particularly to pensioners for health care, $1,400 per car associated with those obligations uh, here. So to begin my talk, I wanted to ask you uh, to take a guess. What do you think is the cost of uh, the annual uh, health care cost bill uh, in Switzerland in 2016, which is the country that spends more on health care than any other uh, country? Here's the answer. Uh, Sarah just pointed it to me. Uh, $9,674. Thanks for that heads up. This. Um, this is the number that the United, it's almost exactly the number that the United States had for 2017. So uh, large uh, uh, developed uh, countries such as the United States, Switzerland, many countries in Western Europe uh, are, have, are, are, have annual per capita health care bills that are approaching 10,000 U.S. dollars per person per year. Here in Canada, it's about half that. U.K., it's about half that. So we're able to manage our costs somewhat differently uh, than in the United States and Switzerland. But this is still, I would argue, uh, uh, $5,000 is, is a very high number uh, here. So what is the relationship between average per capita spending and the threat to companies uh, uh, here? Well, uh, it, it, there's uh, many different routes that tie this phenomenon of escalating health care costs and the opportunity that's associated with uh, lowering these costs to the actions of companies. The first I want to highlight is that in a large number of industries, uh, the escalation of health care costs has driven appreciation of revenue and profitability over the past 25 years to unprecedented levels. I study, as, uh, as do many of my colleagues, a number of industries on this list, the pharmaceutical industry, medical device manufacturing, uh, primary health care, acute and tertiary health care. These are all classic you know, uh, health care uh, expenditures associated with these industries. Uh, you may not think immediately of insurance, but the cost of administering insurance uh, uh, also constitute a health care uh, expenditure. Uh, the food we eat, the way that uh, information is disseminated about our health, lots of lifestyle support uh, industries, uh, your gym, the Fitbit that you wear, and so on, all of them uh, constitute health care costs. And many of these in the companies in these industries Ha, are making more and more money, <laughs> you know, over time as they take advantage of opportunities to satisfy our insatiable need uh, for a better quality of life and improved, uh, improved health care. But most don't. Most companies across the economy are dealing with the escalating costs of providing health care to their employees, their pensioners, their constituents, without benefiting as directly as the companies in these, uh, these industries here. And this is my summary of the economic uh, elements of the threat here. Uh, about 10% of world income is now spent on health care. In fact, uh, in, a recent, uh, uh, in a recent article, I just made the argument that uh, the strategies that many companies from uh, countries like Switzerland and the United States are pursuing to export their health care activity into emerging markets is uh, going to make this number higher in the next uh, few years, and is, by the way, I would argue, uh, unlikely to succeed. You know, uh, $10,000 per person per year uh, is not going to fly in India, where per capita income is something like half that. So there's no, there's no way that we can sustain uh, the healthcare system's expansion uh, into the rest of the world. Even here, 
uh, costs are rapidly rising. 84% of our health care bill is spent in wealthier co- uh, countries, and this is uh, not fair. So uh, this gets me to the second uh, threat that we face, which is that uh, uh, companies that are seeking uh, to wor- operate internationally and around the world have to grapple with uh, the challenge that many of the workers that they may encounter, or the, the context in which they may uh, expand, may have very different healthcare systems, very different approaches to you know, even conceptualizing what constitutes an appropriate corporate sponsorship of healthcare expenditures. This was not cited as one of the most important uh, elements of General Motors' bankruptcy, but it came up in the Kodak and Xerox cases. We are internationalizing and trying to grapple with the challenge of uh, offering harmonized health care benefits to uh, our constituents around, uh, around the world. I would argue as well that there's another level of um, uh, challenge in the health care system which is much more difficult and intractable in some level for us to get our hands around, and that relates to outcomes. And this is a quote from... Uh, really a book that um, I recommend everyone read. It's, it's called Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. And uh, I know the title is daunting, uh, but it's a quick and, and wonderful read. And here's, here's what he says. He says, you don't have to spend much time with the elderly or those with terminal illnesses to see how medicine fails the people it's supposed to help. Lacking a coherent view of how people might live successfully all the way to their very end, we have allowed our fates to be controlled by the imperatives of medicine, technology, and strangers. And what this book really says, and and, um, he makes this argument in a very uh, compelling and detailed way, is that we, because our healthcare system was built on principles that we inherited from the Industrial Revolution, we have a lot of siloed uh, elements of care. There isn't a lot of communication. The entire system is driven to try to wait till you're sick and restore you to a level of health that you had previously. It's very much a fix your broken parts kind of uh, theory of medicine or of of what constitutes health here. We wait till people are sick, and then we have specialists that try to deliver to you what they know uh, how to do best here. The values in our system are economizing, a sort of uh, emphasis on uh, a sort of youthful uh, uh, characteristics of sort of the human body. We, We go in and try to fix your broken arm and get it back to the way that it was before. We try to, you know, sort of address uh, problems in your, uh, in your individual component parts uh, separately here. That has to change. It's leading to inhumane outcomes, especially in the place where we spend most of our health care dollars, which is in care for uh, people who are my age and older, okay, care for uh, people who are, who are elderly. Something like 67% of our health care budget uh, here in Canada is spent on people who are over the age of 50, and we have to do better here because what we're, get, what we're ending up doing is uh, compelling people to make choices in the interest of extending their lives just a little bit, choices uh, that have a very high risk of actually diminishing their lives and their quality of life. So the threat here um, is, is not is not only uh, related to the costs and the, uh, you know, the, uh, the lack of fairness and the accessibility of the system. We also have a system that's not sustainable because it's not delivering good quality of life. It's not delivering health, especially in this crucial period of retirement when we, we deserve uh, to be uh, happy and healthy. So uh, uh, the argument in my chapter is that uh, we need two things in order to be able to address this problem, and these are very large, uh, large-scale uh, assertions that I'm making, and that's why I'm especially grateful to Sarah and Joshua for the invitation to write this up. The first is we need a whole new way of thinking about what health is and what that means for what constitutes health care. And here's a couple of things on my short list. I'm just going to read one or two for you, but one of them is this idea of prevention. We, we need to focus much more on prevention and early diagnosis and comprehensive treatment, not waiting until you break your arm uh, to find out that you have osteoporosis, but finding out in advance and teaching you how to keep your balance so that you don't have that fall. We need a lot more social support, mental health. We know that social relationships uh, improve health. Meaningful work uh, 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 creates health. 
and a better decision support. Some of the uh, tools that uh, Alberto and our friends in the Creative Destruction Lab have been working on uh, offer ways of helping elders make better decisions about whether or not to take on a risky heart surgery late in life that may have a small chance of improving the length of their lives but a large chance of diminishing it. Uh, there's a lot that we can do there. This is hard enough. We need to have national conversations about this. But uh, making the transition to this is even greater. And here's where General Motors' role uh, could have been uh, reconceptualized away from uh, negotiating down its health care uh, healthcare bill here. We have to, uh, in uh, organizations, I argue in this chapter, uh, really support a goal of making a transition to a better health system in every aspect of an organization's operations here. The real opportunity for General Motors was to make better cars that would prevent injuries, that would reduce the climate effects uh, that uh, escalate uh, food shortages and uh, create nutritional support, that, uh, to, to really reconceptualize the way that uh, transportation uh, is, is uh, evolving here. So th that leads me to uh, my conclusion here. The, the, the problem of health care for General Motors is more than one of only offering competitive benefits to employees and pensioners. It's one of really reconceptualizing everything that it does to actually generate better health. And my argument is that strategies that support human health, like making safer cars and figuring out how they could be deployed more effectively uh, to uh, reduce our climate imprint, actually are more sustainable than those that are not and are going to lead uh, to leadership uh, across uh, every industry, not just those that are most, uh, uh, most uh, commonly associated with healthcare. Thank you very much.